Nelson Mine in Pico do Arieiro, probably the third highest point in Madeira. And the plan is actually to go down from here on a mountain bike with these guys to Funchal. And then on the afternoon, I take a road bike and I explore the, the region there. Uh, at least that's the plan. Uh, we'll see how it goes. And I'm right now at 1,800 meters. And the clouds over there are at around 1,300 meters. Amazing place. Let's go. The route we took was extremely diverse. In one moment, it seemed we were in Colombia roads, and in another, on the Alps. Some tracks were more close to Enduro, but mostly it was just perfect for mountain bikes. We could notice the flora changes while losing altitude, lower vegetation at the top, and higher vegetation in the middle and lower sections. And it is a command, Aki. Meh! You know them? Meh! No. <laughs> and the pastor there, alive. Yeah. With the de cowboy. <laughs> This was the beginning of Luvada da Serra. You may ask, what is Luvada? For that, we need to check the history. Madeira was discovered one year after Porto Santo, in 1419. And when João Gonçalves Zarco and Tristão Vaz Teixeira arrived, they noticed how dense and impenetrable the forest was, and they called Madeira. The island is very mountainous. The north side has plenty of cliffs and Laurisilva forest, and in the south, more fajange and flatter terrains. The majority of rain happens in the north side, while the south is much drier. The first settlement was in Mexico, followed many others including Funchal, all of them in less slope areas. For this reason, the first settlers had to find a way to irrigate their cultures, particularly the sugar industry that had started on the island. It is believed that the first settlers came from north of Portugal, Douro and Minho. In Mundin de Bast, there is a 13th century levada, so that is probably the source of this technology. Massive construction started and continued for many centuries to fuel not only the sugar cultures, but later the wine and bananas. Many people died trying to shape the island, and currently there are 800 kilometers of main channels and 2,700 kilometers of smaller ones. Today, it's still used to irrigate fields, and thanks to tourism and a very low slope, perfect for hiking and in some wider places to ride a bicycle. Uh -huh. So we have a big fire uh, six years ago, I think. Take all the punchal and burn anything, everything. So. And this must have many eucalypts, so they cut the, the, the burn eucalypts and they now they plant with the new trees, but from uh, local trees. The last part of the ride was a long, pretty descent to Funchal. It is believed that there was a lot of Funchu in this place, hence the name Funchal. If you look at the coat of arms, you can check how important the sugar white gold, how it was called at the time, and wine were relevant. Funchal ended up being the capital of Ireland thanks to their deeper natural harbour and wider area, compared to Mexico. Now it's time for a road bike. By the way, interesting fact, on my left, actually this is house of Ronaldo's family. One of them. Before riding in Funchal, I quickly changed to a road bike and headed Camer de Lopes, the capital of bananas and poncha, a traditional alcoholic drink. Not poncho, but poncha.
the bananas over there. Churchill's Palace place in this case because Churchill used to come here to paint uh, in his vacation. There were plenty of bars to taste poncha, and I ended up in Bar Filhos do Mar, a place that apparently idolatries Cristiano Ronaldo. Poncha is basically aguardente cana, which is alcohol made from sugar cane, orange or lemon juice, sugar and honey. Perfect to drink since it was pretty hot that day. I started by the port, which is actually the busiest port in Portugal, considering cruise ships and ferries. You can take a ferry to Port Sand from here. I headed to Zona Velha or Old Town, the first area to be developed. My plan was to climb by bike to Mont, but with little time I had to take the cable car. Botanic garden with all the flora you can see at the island. In Funchal, there is a unique way to go down using a Carreiro do Monte or toboggan. Powered by two men using rubber shoes and dancing along the road down to Funchal. The road was extremely slippery for a road bike. I have no idea how I didn't fall. With the money from the wealth of sugar production, this Manuelin-style cathedral was built. The tower used to be a prison for religious crimes and the street next to it is called Rua do Aljub. Aljub is a word of Arabic origin, meaning prison or jail. There is plenty more to explore in Funchal and in Madeira, but this was just a quick and short ride. Hope to one day return and hope you guys also enjoyed it.